the world is hyper competitive. If you're going to be a man who's going to sit and say, I'm just sad, you are always going to lose in competition to men like me. Yeah. And there has to be losers for there to be winners. I am tired of sympathy. Sympathy doesn't work for anybody. I'm not going to sit here and be sympathetic for people who say they're too sad to try hard and be their best. Guess what? Perhaps I was sad every time I did exactly what I was supposed to do and trained anyway. Perhaps I was afraid when I fought anyway. Perhaps I was tired when I worked anyway. This is how you get ahead in life. I don't have a fucking ounce of sympathy for these people who sit here and say, well, I feel this way, so I can't. Then don't do it. Stay down there. The winners are at the top and the winners at the top don't give a shit about how they feel. We wake up and we perform regardless of how we feel day after day. So if I'm gonna ignore my own feelings, I'm certainly not gonna take into consideration anybody else's. Yeah. Why am I gonna ignore how I feel and make sure I'm constantly performing regardless, flawlessly, and then sit and go, oh, but he doesn't feel good so he's allowed to fuck up. No, you are not. You're not allowed to fuck up to your ancestors or to God or to yourself. You have to perform. This is how it, this is what being a man is about. The baseline of masculinity is doing things you don't feel like doing. I can't comment on being a woman because I'm not one, but the baseline of masculinity as a whole is the thing that makes a good man a man is that he does what he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to work and he works anyway. He doesn't want to go to war and he fights anyway. He doesn't want to get up, he gets up anyway. That's the whole point of it. We didn't want to die in the Titanic. Guess what happened? We died in the Titanic. You can't sit there as a man and say you don't feel like it. You're not allowed to not feel like it. You're supposed to do it anyway, regardless. Yeah. So when a man sits there and says, oh, but you don't understand, I'm struggling with motivation. If you are struggling with the motivation to be a winner, then stay a f loser. No problem, stay yeah. a loser, don't care. Because in my circle, there's no losers around me. Your energy is disgusting, I find it revolting. I don't like weakness around me, even near me. Even people coming up saying hello to me. If you're depressed, don't even shake my hand. I do not have time for losers on any regard, winners only. Men who have mental health issues, I hope them, I wish them the best in the world. But when they come to me and say, and I get this all the time, Andrew, I have this problem, I'm depressed and I can't go to the gym. I say, no, I disagree. You're depressed because you don't go to the gym. If you go to the gym, you might start to feel better, right? I'm saying you can't sit as a man and afford the luxury of saying, I have a mental health issue today, I'm sad today, I'm stressed today, I'm emotional today, I can't work. Because you will lose against the men who don't do that. As a man, it's player versus player, it's ultimately competitive, and as a man you have to outcompete the other men who are prepared to get up and do it anyway. That's how it works. There's no such thing as saying, I'm sad, I need two weeks off. Not as a man if you want to be important. If you want to be important as a man, you have shit to do. You have duties. This is how it exists, this is how it's always been. If I feel sad, it does not change how I act and it does not change the things I do. If I don't feel like going to the gym, I go to the gym. If I don't feel like working, I will still work. I lived, a, I lived in a world for 15 years where I didn't feel like fighting because my nose was broken, but I had to fight anyway. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these people come up to me and, and they say, oh, but I feel this way. I don't put a, a huge amount of importance on emotions. It's not that I don't feel them. It's that I don't think they have much to do with anything at all. If I wake up in a happy mood and I have a business to run and females to cater for and things to do, if I wake up in a sad mood, I have the same shit to do. I'm gonna get it done. So where's the importance of it? It's in my mind, that's how I view it. Like, how does that affect what I'm gonna do? Well, nothing, it doesn't. It's not gonna affect how I live my life, so why sit around and think about it? This modern obsession with happiness is, is the number one problem with the world. Because I don't, I really don't believe humans were ever evolved to be happy, mm -hmm. were we? If you're gonna try hard at something, and I mean genuinely try, 99% of people will get adept at X thing. It doesn't matter what it is. If, if, if I decided I wanted to be good at piano and I gave it everything I got, I'd, play, I'd be able to play piano. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like there's, there's people with one hand who can play piano. It's just how much effort you're gonna put in. I don't struggle with anything because if I decide I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. And I've never struggled with motivation. So if you don't struggle with motivation, then you're never gonna struggle with anything in life. I mean, I'm naturally adept at some things and there's some things I'm not as naturally adept at. But if you're prepared to work, you're prepared to work. So no, I don't struggle with anything. Life is not a struggle to me. I do not view life as difficult in any way. I think life is extremely easy. I believe that all of my problems are gonna be fixed by me. That no one else is gonna wake up and give a fuck about my problems the way I'm gonna give a fuck. Nobody else is going to be prepared to go through what it takes to fix them but me. If I'm in the ring getting an ass kicking, not my coach, not my corner, not my fans, no one's going to get me out of there alive but me. As a man, we live in hyper-competitive environments. I don't think enough men understand how competitive the world is. 
if you want a girl, you're competing against other men. You're not the only man who had the idea of getting that girl. There's no girl you're going to see and go, oh, I'll get that girl and didn't cross anyone else's mind. Everybody else wants her. You have to outcompete other men. You have to be as competitive as possible. You have to be as successful as possible in all realms. You have to be as good looking, as funny, as smart, as spontaneous, as interesting, as charismatic, as rich as possible. You need to try very hard to be your absolute best. And as you become a better man, you'll crack through different tiers of attractiveness and eventually you get to the top and you'll be able to have any girl you want. But the truth is, I have a lot of guys ask me, similar to your question, a guy will come to me and go, how do I get a girl? I'm like, bro, you're a loser. Yeah, but I know, but how do I get a girl? Well, you're a fucking loser. You're a loser. Why are you asking me? It's like saying, how do I win a race with a push bike? You're racing Ferraris. What do you want me to do? Yeah. There's only so much you can do. There's only so hard you can pedal. There's only so many tricks and, and tips. There's only so many game things you can say, yeah. so many pickup lines. If you're a loser, it's gonna be very, very difficult and it's gonna get harder and harder. The game is rigged to become harder and harder for men. It's not getting easier, it's going the other way. And if you're gonna be on a racetrack and there's gonna be Ferraris there, and you're gonna be on a pedal bike or in a Nissan, you're gonna get smoked. Yeah. That's the game. You have no. to get up yourself, you have to improve yourself. I'm not gonna to lie to anybody here and say you don't have to improve yourself. You can stay a loser and, and get chicks, because you can't, Yeah, you can't. This idea of random, just random headaches is bullshit. It's bullshit. If you have a headache, it's for a reason. Did you hit your head? Yes or no? Well, no, you didn't hit your head. So are you dehydrated? Probably. Have you drunk a bunch of water? No. If you really drink a bunch of water and you didn't hit your head and your head still hurts, have you laid down, had a little nap? Maybe you were tired and now you feel okay again. Why are you taking drugs? I know people who just randomly four times a week, I have a headache, let me just take this pill. What headache? Was your brain falling out? Are you, is your brain rotting? Why do you have a headache for no reason? It doesn't make sense to me. It's stupid. A lot of it's psychological. A lot of it's placebo effect bullshit. And it's an entirely wrong worldview. You can't just go through life medicating yourself for imaginary fucking illness. It's dumb. If you want to get rich, you have to act quickly. You have to do things fast. Speed is rule one. Not enough people understand the, the importance of speed because every hour you spend not making money is an hour you're not going to get back. The sooner you turn on the tap to the money, the more money you're going to make. You have to be very, very quick. Life only teaches you lessons the hard way. There's no other way to truly learn a lesson. The thing is you'll notice about people is that when life is trying to give them a lesson the easy way, they'll ignore it. Oops. Oh, like you'll see it all the time. People will, some, they'll have close call, close call, close call, close call. They won't pay attention until something really bad happens. And then they'll be like, oh no, I'll do anything to take this back. Yeah. That's how people learn. No one learns the easy way. It takes a very smart person to learn the easy way. Everybody only learns the hard way ever. The number one thing people don't have control of in their lives is their mind. But what's funny about that is, the only thing in life you can truly control is your mind. You can't control other people. You can't control the weather. You can't even control your health. Your heart might stop beating. You don't make it beat. It just goes, so it's gonna turn off one day. The only thing you can control in, the, in your life is what you think in your mind. So if you're gonna sit there and go, oh, I'm sad, well, you, you can change that if you actually try, but you don't, you just accept it, right? So people have lost control of, of their own minds. And I don't understand why you would allow your mind your own mind to take power from you. Why would you believe in your, let your own mind convince you you're not a lucky person or I'm not this or I'm not confident. Why would you let your own mind sabotage you? I've, I've always been a believer in the struggles men have in their minds and I've always spoke about it and I've suffered with them myself. And this is one of the things when I say like depression isn't real, people say, oh, you don't understand. Let me, let me counter that argument by saying, I understand very well. Me convincing myself and me deciding that depression isn't real is how I prevent myself from ever feeling depressed. And I can o I've can only constructed that mental model because I've been in situations in my life where I felt depressed. I'm not saying depression isn't real because I've never felt depressed. I'm saying depression isn't real because I've been very depressed. The people don't understand where my mindset comes from. I understand struggle and mental health and all these things. And yeah, jail was another chance to certainly touch on them because in jail, you can, in, sorry, in real life, when you have my kind of resource, you can distract yourself very easily. If you're sitting around and feel a bit mopey, if I'm sitting here and I'm a bit like, oh, I can literally make a phone call and 45 minutes be in the air on my way to anywhere on the planet with whoever I want to do anything I want. So you can distract yourself. I'm not saying it fixes all mental health, but it distracts you. Whereas in jail, you are stuck alone with your thoughts. And it was certainly a test of my mental resolve. And I would say that I passed. I, I did well. I, 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 there was never a day where I broke down. There was never a day where I couldn't handle it. There was never a day where I was, you know, I wasn't polite to the staff. I was very nice to everybody. There was never a day I couldn't hack it. It was certainly a test. And 
Also, you know, Tristan said this. I don't want to take his words, but he's true. You go through life telling everyone you're the baddest motherfucker there is. Sooner or later, someone's going to test you. You walk in the pub and you say, I'm the hardest man there is. Sooner or later, someone's going to fight you. Sooner or later. And life's like that. You want to be the top G and you want to go through life and say, I'm the top G. Then God's going to say, well, we're going to see if you deserve to call yourself the top G or not. We're going to put you in a Romanian jail cell. We're going to leave you there to rot. You're not going to know how long you're in there for. And the biggest mindfuck is I thought I was going to be in there for years. I didn't. I had no idea. Everyone's telling me years, years, years. I thought I was going to be in there for years. So maybe God was just seeing, he was watching me and he was having a look and saying, you want to call yourself top G? Let's see. And I like to think I passed that test. So Tonight, it is what it is. But yeah, I agree with you. In, in terms of mental struggles, yeah, they exist for all men. And I also think that's one of the reasons I'm so large. I talk about those things a lot. I talk about those things a lot with men and I help men with them. And I try and say to men overall that life as a man is pretty shit. And you're going to feel shit for a pretty large percentage of the time. But you're only going to ever escape that if you just perform regardless. You have to perform when you feel bad. As a man, you can't say, I will perform when I feel good. It doesn't work that way because our heads are too complicated and life's too complicated. There's too much on our shoulders and we have too much stress and too much pressure. Our heads are fucked. You have to be the kind of person who says, I perform regardless. I didn't miss a single day's training. I didn't miss a please. I didn't miss a thank you. I'm not saying I was happy. I'm saying I did exactly what I was supposed to do. The worst thing about prison, I think for everybody else, because there's a lot of men in there who were crying, a lot of men who were having mental breakdowns, I think it is the problem I didn't have, which is knowing that if you're a normal man, you go to jail, and they just pick you up and you go to jail. Who pays the rent? Who's feeding your kids? Who's your wife sleeping? Like, like it, life gets hard for all the external things you could no longer control, things that were your responsibility. I was lucky I didn't have those problems. And when I spoke to people, most people's issues were things that were happening on the outside. And I felt really good knowing that my life is set up in a way where even if I'm plucked from it, it operates. And I set that up because I thought they were going to kill me. Even to this day, if they shoot me right now, everyone around, everything would be okay. I don't have to exist for my life to function. So that was fantastic about jail. The worst thing about jail, I mean, the cockroaches started off really bad, but after a few days, it's amazing how quickly you used to cockroaches just in your bed. <laughs> You're just like, just kick them out of the way. That was kind of bad. But um, not knowing when I'm going to get out, that was bad. Having my name slandered all around the world, that was bad. Not knowing how people are reacting to it. Like the, my first time, month in jail, I didn't know if people believed this garbage or not. I, I had no access to the internet. I didn't see anything. There was a lot about it that was hard. But um, I, I have to believe it's going to make me a better person. Why else would I, why else did I go? What did I go for? To waste three months? To stare at a wall for three months? Is that why I went to jail? No, I must have gone to jail to become a better person. I must have learned something. I have to self-analyze and find the lessons and pick it out. And I think a lot of people don't do that with all the bad situations in their life. And regardless of whether you went to jail or a woman left you or your business failed, whatever it is, you need to analyze the entire situation and say, okay, what can I learn? There's a, there's a big pile of shit here, but there must be a little bit of gold inside. So I've just tried to look at it as a massive learning experience and perhaps as a coping mechanism, but I've found a lot of lessons which I'm implementing. And, uh, and there's a very strong chance they're going to put me back. Not because I'm guilty, because I haven't done anything wrong, but because I'm currently in the middle of a, a, a judicial system. I'm in, in, I'm in the judicial system of a country. I don't truly understand the language. I don't understand the judicial system. I don't understand the charges against me. I don't understand how any of this can be legal. I don't understand how where it's come from. I don't understand the evidence they believe they have. And here I am stuck in this process. And who knows how it's going to end? There are moments in your life that you feel overwhelmed by life by people, by your own circumstances, by struggles. We all get knocked down in every aspect of life. Life has a way of humbling you. Life will make you shut up. Life will mute you. You're going to feel awkward and stupid and dumb sometimes. At times you won't want to come out the house. At times you'll be feeling bad and don't know why what's wrong. I don't know. Just leave me alone. You will cry. You're going to fail, and you're going to be in your head. You're going to be saying, I'm not good enough. But it's okay. It goes with the territory. It's a part of the deal. The real challenge of growth comes when you get knocked down. You got to get messed up sometimes. You got to get dirty. You got to get your feelings hurt. You got to get disappointed. You're going to ask somebody for some money. He's going to tell you no. That's just dirt. How you handle it 
That's where the growth takes place. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here, I can get me out of this. If somebody came and knocked you down, there ain't nothing you can do about it. But if I come back a week later and you're still on the ground, we got a problem. You can decide that you're going to change, that you're not going to be a wimp. The way you were born, what happened to you is not your fault. But doggone it, you still on the ground after 20 years? See, you get tripped out because you got dirt on you. But you need dirt on you to develop. If you get knocked down, there's nothing you can do about it. But getting back up has every single thing to do with you. Don't you give up on your dream. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. See, you get mad when haters come your way. You get mad because you get a setback. You get mad because they talking about you. That's dirt. You are not the only person that's been through a divorce, boo. Get over it. You're not the first one they let go of. You won't be the last one. The question is, what you going to do about it? I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. You can decide that you're going to stand up to life. I just need you to identify what your pain is. And then I need you to ask yourself what you're going to do about it. And maybe you've been knocked down in your life and it seems like, hey, the fight is over. It is not over unless you quit. You can permit it to let it hold you down or you can decide I'm not going to let that happen to me. You have a choice to either give up or get up. You got to get gritty, man. You got to develop some dog in you. You can decide I'm going to work on myself and develop myself. I'm going to empower me. You have to learn to turn and look at every obstacle as an opportunity. I will not give up. Every time I get knocked down, I will get back up and I will succeed. I love myself enough not to be trapped in the same doggone spot for the rest of my life. No pain, no gain. Pain has a purpose. Your pain ain't permanent. It might last for a second. It might last for a minute. It might last for months. But sooner or later, if you do not surrender, if you do not give up, it will subside. Don't go through it. Grow through it. And as pain leaves your body, guess what's going to take its place? Success. You cannot build anything that won't bring a battle. And if you're going through a battle right now, it's only because you're building something. Stop running from your pain and embrace your pain. What will you do with your pain? Will you let it break you or will you let it redefine? Your pain is going to be a part of your prize. I challenge you to push yourself. You want affirmation, look yourself in the mirror and say, I think I can, I know I can. You've got to decide to be relentless. You've got to decide never to give up. Do whatever it takes. You your biggest driver. You've got to find some reasons within yourself that will give you the stamina when life catches you on the blind side to keep on calling and coming back again and again and again. You see, the fight's not over if you've been knocked down. It's only over if you quit. Because life is a fight. It's a fight for integrity, your goals, your dreams, your ambitions. So every morning, I've got to wake up and I've got to fight. You're going to quit or you're going to make it to your silver. You're going to quit or you're going to make it to your goal. So you can stop waiting for it. You can stop wishing for it. And you can get on with the rest of your life. I got to fight for my dreams. I got to fight for character. I got to fight for integrity. When you get to the point where enough is enough, doors start opening, opportunities start happening. But what you cannot do is you cannot quit doing the process. All I'm saying is don't quit. I didn't say don't rest. Mentally, you can stay connected. But to win fights, you got to have stamina. You got to be ready to fight and bounce back. You better not feel sorry for yourself. You better get up and fight. And some of you are not successful because every single time you run up against a trial, you stop. I need you to match whatever effort the enemy is putting up. Match the doggone effort. I'm going to think. I'm going to execute. And I'm going to win. And that's how you get to the next level. You cannot give up because it ain't what you see. You cannot give up. It's when you have nothing left. It's when you depleted all your money. When you have nothing left, that's when it's showtime. At the end of pain is your promise. So stop crying about it and use your energy to get through it. When you find a way out of no way, when you find breath that you don't have, when you want this thing as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you find a way. I cannot stop what happens to me, but I can dictate how I respond. I invested too much to quit. So when life happens, I don't just sit there and cry. I brought back. 
Because all of us, if you live long enough, will go through a period of feeling so overwhelmed. Sooner or later you feel, oh God, just get me out of this. I wish I could tell you it's going to get easier. I wish I could tell you that, but that's not the truth. The truth is, you got to find something within. Life's going to whip your butt. Life is going to bully you. Stop crying. Let it hit you. But don't let it punk you. And when you find out what your why is, when you find your why, you find a way to make it happen. And I'm telling you right now, don't give up. Don't give in. Get through it. I don't care if you're sick. I don't care what you're going through. If you're not dead, he ain't through with you yet. As long as that breath in your nostrils, you're still in the game. You're going to be here one day, but you'll never get here if you give up. As long as that breath in your nostrils, you still can win. And finally, guys, you got to want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe. And you will promise me that from this day forward, you will not be defeated. Somebody holler, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Don't count me out. I may be sick, I may be crazy, I may be confused, but I'm not dead yet. Some people live in the cemetery of their failures. And I want to say to somebody who's fallen, or everybody hates you, and everybody walked away from you, don't live where they left you. Nudge somebody and tell them I will not die here. Whatever it takes for me to get out, I got to get out of here. I will not die on drugs. I will not die in depression. I will not die where you met me. Number one motivating thing for me, and I'm just being honest, was I was sick and tired of being poor. My mother was poor, my father was poor, my brothers and sisters were poor. I lived in a poor neighborhood, we lived in a poor house. And I would say, you know, like at Christmas time, my father would put us in the car and take us out to the suburbs to see the Christmas lights. And I would see these big houses, man. I told my father, I said, Dad, I said, why don't we get one of these houses? He said, boy, I ain't got no money for this kind of house. He said, but if you work hard, you can make some money, you can buy you one of these houses. My motivation was to buy a big house so I could put up Christmas lights. And I always dreamed of buying my mother and father a real house. And before they died, I was able to do all of that. You have to find a dream that's so big that it overwhelms all of your fears and causes you to never give up. Always go to something bigger than yourself. I'm wondering if you've been defeated because you have been giving yourself wholly to something that was too small to hold you. Are you trying to take a bath in a bowl? Are you not guilty of immersing yourself into things that were too small to hold your vision? Why you keep imagining buying a house? Why do you keep imagining getting rich one day? Why do you keep imagining that? Because God is talking to you. You got to start believing in your imagination.